In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new inexpensive mini PC known as the N1 Pro. And I've had this on my radar for a little while, but recently it went on a pretty decent sale over on Amazon, so I knew I had to get my hands on it. And this thing is coming in with a very small form factor. They do offer a couple different storage variants, but all of them are basically the same when it comes down to the overall specs of the CPU and RAM amount. But as you can see here, I mean, it's a palm-sized, full-fledged Windows 11 PC. And I've been doing a lot of testing with this little thing. It's actually a really great performer when it comes to everyday normal desktop tasks, light PC gaming, and especially emulation. At the time of making this video, I picked this up on Amazon for $130. So there's a $70 off coupon for the 256 gigabyte model and the 512 model. 512 will come in a bit more expensive, but you can pick up the 256 gig model for $129. And inside of the box, obviously, we've got the mini PC. Comes with a bracket, all the mounting hardware we need, and our 12 volt, 36 watt power supply. Taking a look around the unit, up front we've got our power button. On the left hand side, three full size USB 3.2 ports. Moving over to the right hand side, full size HDMI, display port, and a full featured USB type C port. So this does support video out and power in, meaning you can run this in single cable operation mode if you've got a monitor that supports USB type C video in and power output. And of course, around back, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and our power input. Upgrading the storage on the N1 Pro is super simple. On the bottom, we've just got four screws. Then we can pull the bottom plate right off. This only supports a 2242 M.2 SSD, and it's got non-user upgradable RAM, so keep that in mind. And when it comes to the overall specs of the N1 Pro, this is powered by the Intel N150. This is a new twin-like CPU, four cores, four threads, and it'll boost up to 3.6 gigahertz. It's got a 24 compute unit Intel UHD iGPU up to 1000 megahertz, 12 gigabytes of onboard RAM running at 4800 megahertz. It's got that 2242 M.2 SSD, and you can do up to two terabytes with this drive. It's got built-in AC Wi-Fi, and out of the box, this is running Windows 11. Checking out the BIOS here, there's one setting that I recommend changing, and it's really easy to do. Over here at Advanced, we're going to go to Power Settings, and out of the box, this is set at Balance Mode. It gives us around a 12-watt TDP, but once we go in, you can see there's a Silent Mode, which is definitely not going to give us better performance, but we've got a Performance Mode which actually takes this up to a full TDP of 20 watts when you're stressing out the CPU and GPU, and a manual mode. So we can go up, but to tell you the truth, in performance mode, from right here, that's about where we need to be. And this is going to give us the best performance this little PC can give us. Uh, not much else in here that you really need to mess around with. There is a hardware monitor, smart fan settings, so you can set this up for uh, full speed if you want to. But the automatic mode here is where I'm going to sit and we'll see what kind of temps we get by the end in performance mode. Now, once you've got that set, save and exit, and then you can get right into Windows. So far, really impressed with the performance of this thing. And as you can see, we've got that Intel 150. Non-upgradable RAM. Remember, uh, we've got 12 gigs here, 4400 megahertz. And of course, the 24CU iGPU. From the BIOS, we went to performance mode. There's also a custom mode, but basically as high as we can go with this chip is around 20 watts. Over here, I've got core temp. We'll have our power limit here. Plus we've got our temperature. Max so far through my testing was 80 degrees Celsius. If we run a stress test on the N150 itself, you'll see that our TDP jumps up to around 13.6 watts. All cores are at its maximum clock of 2.9 on all four at the same time, but we also need to add a little to the iGPU, and you'll see this jumps up to 20 watts. So we've got a 20 watt TDP in performance mode, and even with this thing just sitting at 20 watts here, I have not had it thermal throttle. It's still really quiet. So the cooling system here isn't bad for the chip, and it doesn't need much to cool off 20 watts, but we have seen some of these N150 and N100 chips kind of get real hot at this kind of wattage. Another thing we have here is the Intel graphics software. So there is a few things that we can do here to get a little better performance when it comes to gaming. Uh, obviously we've got our update here, so I'm fully up to date. If we go down to our graphics, at the very bottom, adaptive tessellation. And I've noticed on these lower end chips, turning this on, taking it all the way down does help out just a bit. You can also sharpen that image up if you want to. 
Profiles per game can be added, but there's not a lot that we can really do here, given that we've got such a low-end chip. Obviously, on the N150 chip, no overclocking or anything like that can go on with it. But when it comes down to it, with this thing set in performance mode from the BIOS, it's a very usable system. We'll head over to AUSTAR's website, and we've only got Wi-Fi 5. I am connected to Wi-Fi right now. You can always use Ethernet. Scrolling on down, everything loads up pretty quickly here, and obviously we've got that N1 Pro right here. Not a bad little system when it comes to web browsing, email checking, you know, everyday tasks that you're going to do on something like this. It's not a AAA gaming machine, but uh, 4K video playback is something else that that N150 can handle really well. So we'll just find a 4K demo here, and we'll just go with a Sony Food Demo. We're going to full screen, make sure we're at 4K. Drop frames will be listed right up here. We'll hit play, and throughout we should get zero drop frames with this. I've always had really good luck with the lower end Intel chips and 4K video playback, whether you want to stream it or play it natively from an external or internal hard drive. You know, a little video playback system with this setup is totally possible. So yeah, not a bad little system for normal everyday tasks that most people do on their desktop PC. But now I want to jump into some light PC gaming, and this is not a 4K gaming machine by any means. This is going to run Cyberpunk 2077 at about 20 FPS at the lowest of the low settings. But there are a ton of older games that are going to run at full speed on this system, and it also handles emulation really well, even up to PlayStation 2. First up, Left 4 Dead 2. Yeah, it's an older one, but we've got a very low-end chip here. 900p, medium settings, and I probably should have just taken this up to 1080 because it will run it at 1080. And of course, if we're running this over 100 FPS at 900p, Half-Life 2, Portal 2 is also going to run pretty well on this little system. Hey, I'm reloading. Dirt 3 1080 medium settings getting well over 90 FPS. Now, on the channel, we've tested the N150 before, but we had DDR4 RAM, and I'll tell you, having that DDR5 here up to 4800 megahertz really does make a difference with this little iGPU. Actually unlocks some pretty decent performance. Hades 2, 1080, medium. Yeah, we're running at 60. Every once in a while, I did see it drop down to around 58. Not too bad. I mean, it's fully playable like this, and I was really hoping that we could do this at 1080, 120. But if you're looking to get 120 hertz out of this game, you'll probably have to drop it down to 720 or 900p. And the last one I tested was Bioshock 2 Remastered. We're at low 900p, and you can see in certain areas it definitely dips under 60. So 720 would be where it's at, and even then there's probably a chance with explosions going on that it's just not going to quite run at full speed. But yeah, indie games, older games, there's a lot of stuff that you can run on this. Not to mention something like cloud gaming, you want to do GeForce Now or even Xbox cloud gaming. It's not going to take much CPU to do that and it's going to run great here. But now I want to hop over to some emulation with this thing. First up, we've got some PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. And for most emulation on this little system with Windows, I use a DirectX backend. So for this, it's DirectX 11, and I believe with all of the emulators we tested here, it was DirectX 11. Really depends on what they offer inside of the emulator, but as you can see, at 2x, it's running this game just fine. We could probably take it up again, but it still looks great. And when it comes down to it, as long as the PlayStation Portable game is supported by PPSSPP, this system will run it. Taking it up a little bit with GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, we're at 720p with Automotalista, again using DX11. I really didn't even swap over to Vulcan because it does run so well on this little system. And if you take a look up in the top left hand corner with Afterburner, remember we set this to a 20 watt TDP. With this game here at 720, it's only pulling up to around 8.3 watts in total. Dolphin Emulator also supports Wii, so here we have Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, and by the way, I'm just using a Bluetooth Xbox controller connected. This is another one that runs really well, but I will tell you that with the N150, you will run into some games for GameCube and Wii that just aren't going to perform very well at 720, so you'll have to drop that resolution down to native. The next thing I wanted to test was some PS2, and this is going to be kind of hit or miss on the N150. It really depends on the game. 
Now there's no doubt that the PC SX2 emulators come a very long way. We're using the DirectX 11 back in. I'm at 2x resolution here with Ratchet and Clank, and it seems to be running just fine. This is one of those games that does fluctuate in game from 30 to 60, so you might see a few slowdowns here and there, but it does feel pretty decent on this little PC. I figured we'd go ahead and test one more PlayStation 2 game. Here's Tekken 5, still at 2x resolution. And yeah, for the most part, I mean, this is actually handling PlayStation 2 way better than I thought. And to give you an idea about single cable operation mode with this PC, I've got a portable monitor here. It's plugged into the wall. You could also use a battery pack, but all we need is the single USB Type-C cable to the mini PC. We can power it up. And now we're getting power sent to the PC and video signal back to the monitor itself. And again, if you wanted to go the battery route, you could use a nice little battery pack here. As long as it's putting out around 30 watts, you'd be able to power the monitor and the mini PC at the same time from battery. Another thing I like to monitor while taking a look at these mini PCs is total system power consumption because this can matter to some people around the world depending on energy cost. I personally use a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall and at idle this is only pulling 4.5 watts. Remember we're in performance mode from the BIOS so there's a chance in quiet mode it would pull less. YouTube video playback jumps up to 8 watts and average PC gaming around 18 watts in total from the wall. So yeah it's a relatively low power consumption unit also. Overall, not a bad little performing mini PC, and I'm really glad we do have that single cable operation mode. Uh, some of these cheaper PCs kind of leave that out. So yeah, I mean, you can power this over USB Type-C and get video out. Makes it a lot more useful when you're on the go. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning a little more about the N1 Pro or picking one up, I'll leave some links in the description. Like always, thanks for watching.